So you're second guessing yourself with tarot messages. You're struggling to see whether your tarot messages have value or meaning or resonate with other people or maybe even yourself. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video, how to build confidence as a tarot reader. I'm going to give you my three tips plus a bonus tip at the end of the video so that you can start to build your confidence as a tarot reader reader. But first, if you're coming back to this channel, thank you for coming back. I'm glad you find value in being here and being part of our community. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for being here. I hope by the end of the video, you found this valuable enough that you'll consider subscribing and setting the alert. My name is Dr. Mystical, and I have been reading tarot, practicing mediumship, and investigating the paranormal for over 20 years. And one of the things that I love to do here on this channel is explore the art and the art and work of tarot and oracle readings. So thank you so much for being here, and I welcome you to come back each and every time. So what we're going to get into today is really talking about how to build confidence as a tarot reader. There's an interesting synchronicity with this with this particular video, and that is with my friend V Love and Crystals. Um, recently, V started up a playlist called Tarot for Beginners. You can see that here on the screen, here on the screen over here. And uh, V did a quick introduction to this playlist where she talked. She actually took single word messages from a series of oracle cards and invited tarot readers to kind of pick up one of these messages and deliver it and become part of this kind of conversation around tarot for beginners. I'm going to link V's playlist up here, uh, up here in the uh, show card, as well as in the show description. Check V's channel out, check out the playlist, subscribe over there so you can get more content. Um, I put the YouTube link right here. So right there. So check her out and uh, subscribe to her channel. Let's get into the three tips though. Each of these tips is linked in the show description. So if you come back and you need to kind of jump ahead to a tip, uh, I made it really easy for you. Just check it out in the show description. So let's talk about the first tip I have for you. So tip number one is finding a deck with a lot of support. One of kind of the cardinal mistakes that new tarot readers make or tarot readers who have struggled, have found themselves making is that they selected a deck that might be rarefied or esoteric or eccentric or just something out of the ordinary. Maybe that's kind of the way they go through life. They want to be extra creative and get something that maybe is a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more interesting or harder to find and to kind of capture their interest in doing so. But as a tarot reader who's just starting out or a tarot reader who reads inconsistently, sometimes that's a pretty big mistake. Finding a deck that has a tremendous amount of support will help you to validate the messaging that you're getting. It will help you to understand the story arcs of reading the tarot. It will help you to see how other people are reading with that particular deck. And it gives you access to creators. So when you have a question or you find something interesting in the deck, well, that's a great place to go and get access to that creator, ask the community what's going on, and hopefully kind of validate for yourself what it is you saw in the messaging that you're getting. Every tarot community that I'm part of, I find myself growing in and growing from my readings from, and I find myself growing my confidence as a reader because even though I've been reading for a very long time, well... I find that sometimes my confidence can still grow and I can still get more accurate messaging. So tip number one is to find a deck with lots of support. Tip number two, let's get into it. Journal your tarot thoughts and meditations. One of the things that I do with all of the decks that I have is I ruminate and meditate on each of the cards. I set the book to the side for the most part and I go through each card, I look at it, I think about it, I kind of guess at what the meaning is for that card, and then I go through and start journaling out what I think it is. Even if it's just key words that I find or messages that come, I write it down, and then oftentimes you, I go back to the book, kind of draw a line down the middle of the page, and on the other side, I write down the messaging from the book? What did the creator intend 
for this particular deck. That allows me to kind of make comparisons and contrasts, see where there's synchronicities between me and the reader or me and the creator, and really kind of understand what's going on with the deck. So the first two tips really are to kind of find a deck that is a community of support that you can tap into and be a part of. Tip number two, journal your tarot thoughts. Be diligent about that. Start a YouTube channel. Get out there and kind of just put out your thoughts and do whatever it is you want to do with getting the, your thoughts out of your head onto paper so you can kind of go back and study. So as much as this is an art, it's also a practice. And that means we need to continually be purposeful and dedicated to thinking about our decks and our cards. And so those are my first two tips. If you're finding value in the video, consider subscribing and setting the alert as we're going along here. Now let's get into tip number three. And I think of all the tips, I think this is the most valuable tip because friends, it is to offer open readings for feedback. So one of the things that I did when I started on tarot is I started reading for myself. I'd pull a card or I'd pull three cards or I'd do a big Celtic cross spread and I'd read it for myself. And I would do this over and over again. And as I talk to new tarot readers, what I often hear, people have an interest in tarot, they own a tarot deck and they pull cards for themselves. And all they're doing is reinforcing um, this kind of narrative that fits where they are in their life. And that's all well and good as we get to know our cards. But confidence isn't so much about what I believe. It is the validation of what I believe. And so offering open readings for feedback is a great way to get to know your deck and build confidence as a reader. And there's a few places that I do this even now with my practice. So let me give you both of those. The first is that on my Facebook page, if I get a new deck, I'll often do kind of a Sunday one card reading. I've got a new deck. If you want a reading, comment below and I'll give you a reading, but I want you to tell me what you think of the reading, right? Because practice only makes permanent, right? We just reinforce our thinking, but practice with feedback makes perfect, right? We continually strive for improvement. And that's what's going to build your confidence. And I do this on Facebook. I also do it on Instagram where people want a reading, they can comment, and then I'll post another Instagram picture uh, with their card and their reading and invite them to comment to provide some feedback for me. These are kind of three easy ways to build confidence as a reader. Find a deck with a community of support, a place where creators and readers come together for the purpose of building their deck creation together and getting the message out there and continually improving themselves. Journaling your thoughts and meditations about the card and maybe making comparisons between what the creator intended and what you're getting, right? So validating a little bit of your thinking, but then it does you really kind of no good unless you're offering readings for feedback. Right. The secret here is that we need to be getting some feedback into our process. Read for friends, read for family, put it on a Facebook page, join a group, whatever it needs to be, put it on Instagram, whatever it needs to be to get feedback into your process. That's going to help you perfect what you're doing. And since you're doing it for the energy of just feedback, that's a good exchange. So that's my top three tips. But I promised you a bonus tip, and here's the bonus tip, which is to read along with other tarot readers on YouTube. Uh, this is a little bit of a kind of a, a, a selfless plug here, a selfish plug, whatever you want to call it, shameless, shameless plug uh, for what I'm for my show. But I run a live tarot reading show on Tuesdays called Tarot Tuesdays. It streams here to YouTube and on Facebook at 9 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. And I welcome you and encourage you to attend. Pull out a deck that I'm reading and read along with me or go back through some of the videos that me or other tarot readers have created. When you see the card, pause the video, pull the card, think about it, maybe even write down your message and then play the video on and see if your message matches. So this is just a bonus tip. A lot of times with new decks, I'm going to watch a flip through or listen to an, a review or an unboxing and check it out and kind of validate myself and see what I think and how I'm doing with the cards as I go. But nothing, friends, nothing 
beats that. Offer open readings for feedback. That's the one thing that helps me the very most in building confidence with a new deck or confidence when I'm a little bit shaken. Um, maybe it's a more complicated deck, but it's one of the things I really think new tarot readers need to be doing, and that is to kind of offer open readings for feedback. So friends, if you found value in this video, thank you so much for uh, watching all the way along. Consider subscribing and sending the alert. That helps the channel continue to grow and me to continue to bring you videos and content like this. Um, thank you so much for being here. I really have enjoyed our time and hopefully you enjoyed the video enough to come back for more. Thanks, friends.